Okay, so we're back here at Righteous Guitars today with my friend Ben Hello. Calhoun. A lot of you guys really liked the how to find the perfect guitar video we did a few weeks ago, so I thought a good follow-up to that would be how to find the perfect amp. And I actually think this is quite a bit more difficult than finding the perfect guitar because it's just a lot more complicated. What wattage do you need? What type of circuit are you looking for? Do you need master volume, an effects loop, a head versus a combo? I mean, there's a lot to consider here. This is something that took me a really long time to figure out and I'm still learning. And Ben has sold a lot of amps. He knows a lot about amps. So today we're gonna walk through and teach you how to find the perfect amp. Where do we start? Well, we start with trying to find out, much like in the guitar video, what kind of things you're doing with this amp. You know, are you playing at home? Are you playing with a band? How loud is your band? What kind of music does your band play? What kind of features set do you need? Uh, so we'll, we'll look into those kind of things, again, asking a bunch of questions. And what we're trying to discover is what kind of power is gonna be suitable. Uh, for example, if you play in a really heavy band, like in uh, your drummer is just crushing it and you're playing with a lot of gain, you're going to need more power just for headroom sake, right? So that you can hang with that situation as opposed to if you're playing in, I don't wanna say an Americana band. You probably don't need as much power and you need it to be able to compress and give way a little bit. Um, we break amps up into three main categories. So even though there's a bunch of subcategories, it really comes down to there are American amplifiers. These are gonna be most notably like your Fenders, your Boogie would technically fall into that. Typically that's gonna be 6L6, 6B6 power tube amps, right? Uh, then you'll have your high power British amps, most notably uh, Marshall, High Watt, uh, known for their higher powered amplifiers, almost always the EL34 tube. Again, there's exceptions to that, but those are pretty, pretty much the common tube you can see there. And then you have your lower power British amps, which almost all of us think of like an AC style amp, like a Vox or a, uh, a Vox is really the main one that pops to, pops to mind. So if we can figure out what kind of voice you like, then we can pretty easily take this room of a zillion amps and narrow it down pretty quick, much like we did with the guitars. Every amp out there that exists really does have its basis set in one of those three main categories. So when I was first starting out, when I was in music school at AIM, and I was looking for my first tube amp, I, I wanted something to start gigging with and to be able to use, but I didn't know anything about amplifiers and I didn't have anyone to teach me. So I did my own research and settled on a Mesa triple rectifier with a 412 cab. I thought that was the amp that I needed. It took my friend Ben Forehand to talk me out of that and I ended up going with a Fender style amp, a Port City Pearl, just a clean pedal platform amp. But I did the same thing. <laughs> so it was a, a dual rectifier full stack, so I went to 412 cabinets. <laughs> And it was, uh, yeah, it was a practical. It didn't suit what I was doing at all. It was insanely heavy. I actually bought a station wagon so that I could, could transport it. <laughs> <laughs> that was the reasoning behind it. All right, so American style amps. Uh, most people think of Fenders with good reason. Uh, Leo Fender really did have a lot to do with the development of electric guitar amp. And when you think of Fenders, almost everybody thinks of like Deluxes, whether it be Tweed or Blackface Deluxes, Princetons, Twins, Fiberluxes, your Blackface era amps, which are gonna be made in the 60s. This was Fender's answer to try to clean up and get a higher power out of their amplifiers as opposed to the Tweed amp. So they took that circuit and changed it in a way to give it more headroom and stay cleaner, and that is where the blackface sound kind of came from. So when you're looking at those amps, you can look at like a Princeton, it's a very small, you know, it's a perfect bedroom amp, takes pedals well, it's a, something like these guys. Yeah, it's got a 10 inch speaker in it. Uh, next up you'd have your Deluxes, which those amps have a, a 6V6 tube, and what you can expect out of that 6V6 tube is it's a little squishier. It has some compression, meaning that it's great for things like country and Americana and some kind of alt rock a little bit type of stuff. If 
If you're looking for really tight, super punchy cleans, not so much. That's when you're going to get into your higher power amps like Pro Reverbs and twin, you know, the twin, uh, the venerable 90 pound monster that is a twin reverb. Those are 6L6, they're a much higher powered uh, amplifier. So you also have your tweeds, which we've got one in there for you to check out. The difference between a tweed and a blackface from a player's perspective is tweeds are more touch sensitive. So as you play, you have a more dynamic range. Um, they tend to break up way earlier because of the class of operation that they're in. And in general, they're just a more kind of rootsy, raw kind of sound. They're definitely not refined. I can tell the deluxe outside the tweed deluxe outside the door. Oh yeah. yeah. It's more aggressive. I'm definitely more of a tweed guy than a standard deluxe guy. I mean, that Milkman is amazing. Sounds fantastic. It just depends on what you're doing with it. And If I didn't play any pedals into it or just like drive only, yeah, I'm not mean, Of the two, the Milkman, which is basically just a deluxe reverb, right? Like a blackface deluxe. Yeah, it's like a blackface deluxe. It's overbuilt. It's quieter. The reverb's nicer. It, that, that's subjective. In my opinion, it's a better sounding deluxe with the option of putting six L sixes in if you want to take it up to thirty five, forty. Right. Minutes. I think that Milkman sort of blackface deluxe is more for the cleaner player. Somebody wants a little bit more headroom. Maybe you like the real pristine, clean sounds with the pretty reverbs and delays, and you're getting some overdrive from pedals. Personally, I'm a tweed guy. I like the raunchy sort of overdrive, that really mid rangey sort of honk-ish kind of thing the tweeds do i love and i like the interactive volume controls which is kind of unique to a, a tweed deluxe circuit like that okay so low power british most of us think of vox but other things you might think about as well are a lot of the bad cat stuff matchless uh, a lot of the z uh, dr z amps typically el84 powered uh, amplifiers characteristics of these amplifiers the low end response is drastically different it's way tighter there's not much compression on the bottom end. Mid-range is much more peaked. And the top end has what a lot of people call chimey. Uh, so if you hear the word chimey, people are talking about an AC style sound. That's gonna be like a lot of the Stone stuff had that kind of Vox type of thing going. Obviously like the Edge, the U2 thing, that was all almost all Vox. Uh, Brian May was like an AC30 just cranked to 10, you know, just falling apart, sound awesome. Uh, but it's a very different type of sound. A lot of these amps will also use a different style of preamp tube than any of the other amps that we would look at, and that's the EF86. The way that tube reacts, it has a lot more gain, and I don't mean distortion, but it has a lot more gain available, so it takes pedals in a way that's really nice right into the front of the amp. You'll see that the, the Vox style amp, or the low power British amp, is kind of the generic go-to like in praise and worship bands. That's pretty much what most, most praise and worship musicians are thought to use anyway because uh, it has a great sound that cuts through and it doesn't invade any other areas of the mix and if you crank them they overdrive beautifully What? Are you good? Yeah, that was uh <laughs> should have brought your plugs, man. That was loud. It There's was no way that amp is twenty three watts. Uh, yeah, no. There's no way. Say.
brought in an AC20, which is a uh, it's a classic AC style amp. Uh, very very simple, just a couple knobs, couple switches. It does incorporate power scaling. This is a perfect example of an amplifier that's great if you practice at your house. You can turn that power level way down, get the tone you like, and everything. Turn power level way down, set your pedal board up, whatever, get it sound how you want, and then when you get to the gate, you turn the power level up. Boom. Very easy solution for a player like that. The second amp uh, is kind of the opposite of that. Like it is not bedroom friendly at all. That's what we're in here going. Wow, that was loud. <laughs> but boy, it's fun to play. That's a, a divided by 13 BTR 23. It's purportedly 23 watts. Um, yeah, right. No way. Uh, <laughs> no way that's 23 watts. And this is a good example of an amplifier that does have a master volume. It doesn't help it much. This is not an amp that you're going to be dialing in at your house and then going to the gig. This is the one where you need to have a, a rehearsal area that you can play in at full volume to really get the, the full enjoyment out of it. Unless you use an attenuator, which obviously that would be a great solution for this amp is to put one of those Iron Mans on it. This is undeniably AC. It has the chimey thing going on. And then you plug into this and it's like Brian May just walked in the room, which is funny because it's Brian Ray's amp. Incredible AC, it's what we all wanted. It'll do the Zeppelin thing really, really well. It'll do Tom Petty, it'll do the Stones, all that kind of stuff incredibly well. But that's a good example of two sides of the AC world and two different types of amps that, for Rhett, I'm not worried about you. I know that you can play loud if you can put it in a box if you need to. You've got the attenuator. I'm not, there's not any chance that I would show you an AC20. Even, Even though, though you already have one. I have an AC20. <laughs> yeah, it's a great amp. It's a fantastic But amp. for you, I would absolutely show you something like a BTR or maybe even a matchless, something like that. That would be more of the vibe that I would go for. So high-powered British, uh, we think of things like Marshall. Um, you know, a lot of modern versions might be like Sir's SL series or Friedman, uh, Germino, but all of them kind of share one thing in common. These are amps that will just kick you in the stomach. I mean, they're typically pretty powerful amplifiers. A lot of times they're paired to a closed back, like a 412 cabinet, or even two 412s, like my first ridiculous experiment. <laughs> and they are known more for the driving kind of tones. And this is where you get into pretty much any classic rock hero you have, whether it's Hendrix or Zeppelin Live. Now they did use Voxes and some other stuff in studio, but it's kind of personified with the, the big Marshalls, ACDC, and, you know, the list goes on and on. You go to High Watts with like Pink Floyd, and guys like that. Um, it's a very distinct sound that we all know. And if you want to rock, honestly, that's kind of the sound. You know, it's, it's powerful, it's punchy, the bottom end's tight, mid-range is, is a little less pronounced, top end's got a nice little sizzle to it, but it hits really hard. I mean, it's a very distinct sound and it's pretty easy to tell if someone's into that because that that sound has evolved over the years starting with those earlier bands I mentioned and then you get into you know Van Halen famously used Marshall's uh, the Smashing Pumpkins if you move forward even more I mean that was JCM 800s um, and just keep going I mean the list just goes on and on it's a very well-known amp they're usually larger format usually very powerful amplifiers with a few exceptions that's the Marshall, they're the high power British. I really, <laughs> oh, I really must insist. <laughs> alright, 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 here. Oh my god, alright. Alright, we're going to the second channel then for this. Okay, so we've covered the three basic types of amps. Now, another thing to consider are different features. And there's some common features that a lot of amps have nowadays that are useful things to look at. Things like master volume, power scaling, effects loops, all that kind of stuff. So, Ben? The feature set oftentimes is what can help us determine what the right amp is. Once we nail down the core tone, once we figure those things out, that will lead us in the right direction of the feature set. And by that, I mean, for somebody like you, Rhett, 
I know your sound, like I know what you try to get. For the way that we're playing, effects loops aren't really as necessary uh, as they would be for somebody. So if I have somebody come in, I had a guy last night who came in who plays like 80s rock. That's his thing. So he wants these big pristine reverbs and delays that are really tight and clean sounding. He definitely is gonna want a, an effects loop. So that's one area that we can look at. Effects loops work differently depending on the amp manufacturer you go with. Uh, companies like Third Power, for example. That's Honestly, that's probably the best effects loop I've heard is from Third Power. If you want that pristine, polished, produced sound, that's how you're gonna get it. Probably one of the biggest things that comes into play for us is master volumes. Um, unless you're just somewhere where volume doesn't matter. You know, maybe you're playing it uh, somewhere where they're putting your amplifier in an isolation box. <laughs> master volume doesn't matter at all, right? You just crank it to 10 and go to town. Uh, for other people though, maybe you're playing like out in the bar scene, or maybe you're playing in your bedroom. And you can crank sometimes, but sometimes you can't. Something like a master volume comes in handy. And there's there's not that many ways to attenuate the volume of an amplifier, and they all do different things. So master volume is probably the most simple one that you'll see most often. And master volume is simply turning down the back end of the amp, right? So you can push it, get the front end to drive and sound nice, but at a lower volume that's more manageable. Uh, another approach is the power scaling method, and there's several ways to do that too. Uh, Morgan, for example, Joe's approach to that is pretty brilliant. I think that their power scaling sounds really good, and they're able to pull down the overall volume of the amp, but still, it still feels right, it still has the chunk, and it still feels good. Okay, so like we did in the guitar video, I'm gonna have Ben pick a couple of amps for me. I have a feeling actually you already did before yeah. I got here. I told him we were shooting this video today and I walked in and there's this whole room is set up, so. I was setting it up. Yeah. <laughs> so with Rhett, since I know Rhett, um, and hopefully your local shop too, you have someone there who knows what you're into. I know Rhett's got the Fender thing covered. He's got an FTR, which is the most glorious, huge Fender amp that you could get. It's awesome. He's also got a Tweed Deluxe that he built. So he's kind of got the, the fender side of things pretty well covered. I know he has an AC20, so I know he's kind of got the box thing going as well. What I also know he does have a high watt, but it's an EL84 high watt, right? And he has a few other things I'm sure that I don't know about, but I, I do know one thing he doesn't have, which is a high power British amp. And I also know with like with the guitar video we did, playing it through the P90 and everything, that's a sound that he needs to have in his arsenal. Uh, it's fun, it's rocking, and it's kind of a next level type of Type of deal. So yeah, I have picked out a couple amps, uh, of course. Let's go uh, <laughs> and check them out. Yeah, sweet. It's a divided by 13 AMW 39. This is his uh, Fred's version of a Marshall style amp. It's 39 watts. It's beautiful. I mean, I love the look of it. Just look at yeah. it. Oh my Stat god. Amp. Yeah, we call this Ace in the Hole Tolex uh, grill combo. Uh, it's gorgeous. I love it. <laughs> this is like, I want this in my house right now. <laughs> like really bad. What's really unique about the AMW to me is the EQ section is fully subtractive. If we turn the amp on right now and play, you would hear really nothing until I turned it up a little bit. So you can really tweak it since you're fully subtractive. I can do this and get like that classic 70s kind of, you know, Zep kind of tone. That's not a normal way that you would set an amp to sound good. Right? I can also turn the treble completely down, crank the mids up, and nail ACDC. Again, not the way that you would normally run an amp. But however that EQ is set up, it's really interactive, and I love it. I think that you'll really enjoy this amp, and it's got just enough gain on tap to get into like the late 70s. It'll get that far. Oh, God. This, this video is going to get expensive. I should know by now that if I'm going to come in here and make one of these videos, yeah. it's going <laughs> to...
fun with it loud, but yeah. that's just because it's fun with it loud. Yeah. It sounds it's really good. Idea. It sounds really good at a low volume. <sighs> okay. So like this, this is a great example of two amps that sound wonderful, one of which this amp will appeal, is more usable for people that do need to be able to really suck that volume back, mm -hmm. you know, and enjoy it that way. Whereas, or maybe they play in a couple bands, maybe one of them isn't crazy loud, maybe one of them's ripping. Right. This will handle all that. Yeah, that's definitely a more gigable. Like I would, I would put that towards a working musician. Actually, someone like myself who's playing with a couple different artists, somebody that's in and out of different situations, different size rooms, recording studios, and and you need the variable volume. That's for somebody maybe even like on a church gig where you've got a an ISO cabinet or you're playing in the same places consistently, and you know you can handle the volume. I think you're just trying to justify this amp to yourself. I am, yeah, I am. Because just, it sounds incredible. And for whatever it's worth, it looks really good. It too. looks it is really sexy. good. Yeah. My god. Wow. Fred makes pretty stuff. 